still stuck. I'm still stuck. I'm still stuck in the 60s. The mamas and the papas still get to me. My hair is still long. The new ride is still wrong. And I still ain't got my degree. I still ain't bought a blue suit. Still ain't drunk enough beer. I still ain't married my wife. I ain't even picked a career. What in the past is the matter with me now? Why didn't I evolve? And why am I asking the likes of you? You got the same problem to solve. Gallagher, stuck in the 60s. Something else was happening that affected you. It was in the news. It was on TV. It was in the paper. They was getting you on the campus. I went to school for six and a half years. It was a long war. But wasn't it exciting? Everything affected us. There was a war in Vietnam. There was civil rights. There was women's rights. There was music happening in all directions. You could go acid rock or you could go John Denver rock. <laughs> Either way, granny dresses or psychedelic paint. You know, there was all kind of stuff happening. What's happening now? Nothing. <laughs> I am so bored, I'm flashing back. <laughs> I mean, what can you say about the 70s? I think everybody else is too. I think you are because we saw that the 70s, we didn't come up with nothing. It started with Watergate and ended with disco. <laughs> the first fad that was popular because everybody hated it. <laughs> so dumb. It seems like they're saying, let's redo the 60s and it just ain't coming out right, is it? No. There was violence in the 60s when they shot the president. We didn't know who did it. Could have been the Russians, could have been the Cubans, could have been the CIA, the FBI, Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> but in the 80s, who was it? We know. Hinkley. <laughs> All by himself in his motel. <laughs> I think I'll shoot the president. It seems like these days we're just playing with life, like it really isn't so serious. Nobody believes they should do anything to him because he shot the president. Oh, he couldn't have been doing that. 
That's too serious. It's a good thing he didn't try and steal the president's car. He might have gone to jail. <laughs> I'm saying, right, this, this is a crazy time out here. Civil rights, they were so worried. We want equal opportunity to have a job. You got equal opportunity. There ain't no job. <laughs> then women's rights. Oh, gee, in the 60s, it seemed so exciting. Surely it would happen. This is America majority rules. Women are in the majority. They'll vote themselves an amendment to the Constitution. In the 80s, we find out what? No. They found out when they stood up for their rights, they lost their seat. <laughs> I don't know, there's just lots of different things. Do you see these differences? Well, when I was, uh... When I was in the... Yeah, I ain't quite in the 60s. People say to me now, they say, how'd you lose your hair? I said, I lost it in Vietnam. <laughs> Boy, you women were sure a letdown to me, though. Let's talk about the difference between the sexes. This is touted a lot. What, how many people believe in equality of the sexes? Yeah. <laughs> You're wrong. <laughs> Equal but different. Remember that equal but different uh, we tried to pull on black people? <laughs> no, I'm talking uh, man's shortcomings. Man can't handle Christmas. <laughs> Can they, women? No, they don't know how to shop. They ain't used to shopping. Women love Christmas. They love to shop. Here comes an opportunity to buy something for everybody they know. <laughs> Can you believe it? But men, men don't care. You know, they don't want to shop. In fact, if a man does get done shopping, he can't believe it. He busts up at the house. He just blows up. He can't contain him. <laughs> You're gonna like it. <laughs> I probably got you something nicer than you got me. <laughs> So they bother you with it, they bother you with it, they bother you with it. Finally, you say, give me the damn present. <laughs> you open that up, and it's dough. <laughs> Lucky for you now, you got a couple of days, take it back to the store, get something else, so when your mother comes over, she don't see you're still married to an idiot! <laughs> All right, men, I'm on your side here because women can't throw a ball. <laughs> You like this. <laughs> a man's left hand is as good as a girl's right hand. In fact, that'd be fair. A man's left hand, girl, a girl's left hand ain't worth nothing. <laughs> they know it too. All you can do is crook it and hang a pocketbook on it. That's it. <laughs> a lot of women shaking their heads. I'm not saying what's right, but the men agree, don't you guys? I know it. Women, you don't get everything right. Let me show you. When you go out shopping, you buy us underwear that fits cardboard. <laughs> and they buy these damn things, don't they, guys? This is called the decorative chair cover. <laughs> Does this look like your house? <laughs> Now I'm talking the real difference in men and women. Snake! <laughs> See, all the guys are cool. <laughs> Let's talk about sex a minute here. I'm gonna get down. Oh. I'm, gonna get down. Oh. I'm gonna get down and poke my nose in your business. 
I'm going to go right in the bedroom. I'm talking about your relationship. I'm talking about a crack in your relationship, a problem that... Be nice. I'm talking about a problem each and every one of you have. Don't you feel cocky if you're getting it once a night because you might be getting it twice. Each and every one of you have a problem out there, and it's the woman, it's her fault, ain't it, guys? Oh, yeah. And the problem is hanging in the closet. I'm going to get it out now. I'm going to get out the problem in your relationship and solve it right now by saying it out loud. Men, are you with me? Get rid of this damn road. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> if you never want to have sex again, <laughs> wear this road. Am I right, guys? And this book. <laughs> Am I right, guys? Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, if this was just a private problem, I would not say anything. If this problem was just in your house, I would not poke my nose in, but this has now become a public travesty. <laughs> this is an emidemic. Emidemic? <laughs> emidemic is closer to what it is <laughs> than an epidemic. When you women start feeling the least bit secure around the house like this, you know what's happened. You went and found you your tie. And you tied this up real decent. You got you something for your hair. You got you another shoe. It matches the hat. You grabbed your pocketbook and you headed out for the grocery store. This is a hideous problem. <laughs> but can we really blame the women? No. No. no, we've got to blame Sears for starting them out in this. I found this in the junior myth section. What would make a girl so ashamed of her skin <laughs> that she would wear a hood and a place to hide her hands in her house? <laughs> this is what you wear if your father is the elephant man. <laughs> if you have terminal acne, you wear this. This is the beginning, this I'm all upholstered look. <laughs> and it moves right on. Tell me, gang. <laughs> not a dish rag. <laughs> you answer, yes, this is a dish rag. Does it make it any less a dish rag if the stripes are wider? No. Let me show you a further epidemic. <laughs> It looks nicer than the others. It's called a house dress. As in, as big as. The tag says Eiffel. So is the back. Now they move on into the bigger size. Of... Yes, a square half acre. This... This is what a woman wears when she's tired of trying to make it fit her shape and just sews along the edges. <laughs> you wear this when you want to sneak into the bed with food. <laughs> just put the platter under there and away you go. <laughs> Ends up there anyway. Now, here's the one. This is what a woman calls her good robe. <laughs> She puts this on on an evening when she'd like to get screwed, but if it don't happen. <laughs> and 
And if she don't get it, this is what she puts on the next night. <laughs> This Christmas, Grandma made me <laughs> this. <laughs> Grandma said, what color you want? <laughs> I said, it don't matter. <laughs> Grandma showed me, it damn sure does matter. <laughs> There are colors here that do not exist in the natural rainbow. Some of these colors exist only in yarn. <laughs> I'm speaking the truth. And I'm not just blaming the girl. This is the problem. When we're starting kids out at such an early age with Bert and Ernie, later on, this looks conservative. <laughs> That's the problem. It's not just one sex or another. Sometimes it's both of you. You're both buying these things and they're the stupidest damn things I've ever seen. I didn't say anything when the dogs were playing cards. But now that the cats are playing cards, <laughs> you know. I mean, well, if the cats can play cards, then of course the dogs can shoot pool. <laughs> How are you gonna make a bridge with a paw? <laughs> and the uh, optimum of stupidity is trying to make people believe it's okay for your son to read the book in the living room with the lion. <laughs> this is Michigan. Now, when I say I'm stuck in the 60s, I'm talking about my mind. I'm not talking about the way I dress. In fact, the dumbest thing about the 60s was the way we dressed. <laughs> but I'm talking about the mind of the 60s. It asks questions. See? Went right up against Michigan. Huh? <laughs> I still have a problem in Michigan when I take my 60s kind of mind up there. And I just ask them stuff. I see on TV, you tell me, is this not dumb? I'm watching TV, they had taken a bunch of blind people. They thought they'd do something real nice. They took a bunch of blind people that normally don't get a chance to hunt. <laughs> that is dumb, isn't it? Oh, well, they wouldn't laugh. I began to wonder. But I thought, what is dumber than a blind person with a gun? Would be handing them the gun. Where do you hide from a blind person with a gun? <laughs> How do you make a noise that ain't like a rabbit? <laughs> this is the problem. It's this kind of overall stupidity. I don't know. Do you see it? <laughs> I saw it just the other day. I'm walking up to a buffet. I didn't think, well, gee, how could I find stupidity at a buffet? <laughs> I'm walking up to the buffet, and uh, I said, uh, you know, I'd like to have the buffet. And then he says, is that one for the buffet? I said, yeah, that's why I use I. <laughs> I'd like to go over to the buffet. <laughs> I should have known it was dumb to begin with. You don't have a mater d' at a buffet. <laughs> so it's like a hubcap on a tractor. <laughs> really. So I say, I'd like to go over to the buffet. And he says, uh, just wait a minute, we'll show you to your table. I say, I ain't eating my table. <laughs> I want the buffet. So he says, well, you don't understand. I said, I understand. You see this? I've played buffet before. <laughs> I said, I know, what'd you do? You're gonna take me over there, open up the table, slide me in, cram me in. Five minutes later, a guy that don't speak English is gonna give me a glass of water I ain't gonna drink. <laughs> Ten minutes later, a waitress is going to come over, and, I, and she's going to say, what do you want? And I say, I want the buffet. She says, it's over there. 
I don't know, am I wrong there? No. I just demand something. I demand to be served right. I demand it. Maybe that's not the 60s. I didn't serve in the 60s. <laughs> but, well, like, remember service station? Remember that? <laughs> Boy, wasn't that something? Remember that was a dinger bell? An air hose? You come driving in to go, ding dong, the dude come running out. <laughs> Tell me I serve you. Let me get the oil, let me get the water, let me get the gas, let me get the windshield, let me do every damn thing I can for 32 9. <laughs> Now what is it? It's a buck now, come down from a buck and a half. <laughs> Gone from impossible to improbable. <laughs> and the dude lives in a little house. What's over there? <laughs> you gotta go, hey, turn on the pump. <laughs> you know? Abro El Pumpo. <laughs> You want to communicate. What are you going to say, you know? Mucho test? Ocho tain? What are you going to say? <laughs> Have you ever asked them for a quart of oil over in the little house? They look at you like, you're an idiot. What do you want a quart of oil? At a gas station? Go to a grocery store where you belong. <laughs> Am I wrong about this? No. Good. Yeah. I thought I was. You know, we try and communicate out on the road with each other and be in agreement on stupidity, don't we? Don't you? I see your faces out on the road when we see an idiot driving. We all look around at each other and go. Yeah. I feel that camaraderie of people. <laughs> Whose minds demand a little bit of reason, too, when you're driving. These people are such idiots. You always know they're in a hurry, too. They, they're just in a hurry to get someplace and screw it up. <laughs> they go real fast in this lane, then jam on the brake. And because you can't get through, you know you couldn't get through, otherwise you'd have driven over there. <laughs> right? So they fade back to fade, back to fade, back to come around, to come around, to go real fast. <laughs> then they slam on the brakes again because they can't get through, right? But you could see that. That's why you didn't go over there. <laughs> if they were smart, they'd hang back with you. Because you know there's a light up there where they're going to have to stop in a minute anyway. No sense racing up and sitting there for the whole light. You can just tool up behind them, get out of the car, plenty of red, walk up. Tap on the window, say, what was all that back there? <laughs> I got an idea. You know truckers are really bugging me lately. <laughs> These truckers, they run right up on the back end of you. You know how they do? Yeah. You know, they run right up, run right up, run right up, run right up. You were driving these little cars, too. I can't believe Americans would drive these little <laughs> rice-burning cars. <laughs> I look at that and I say, you could have had a V8. <laughs> I wanted to show you my new idea is to have, uh, have redesign the truck so that the truck driver is a little more jeopardy when he comes up behind you. See, you make him, you make him drive. <laughs> See? I got lots of ideas. I just ain't in charge. But I'm investing my money in these ideas. You got to have something to put your money in. I can let you people in on it. If you like any of the ideas, you can just give me some money. I'm coming out with something to help kids so they eat greens. You know kids that don't want to eat greens? Peas on the cob. It confuses them a little. Let me see, I got uh, a Zen laxative. All things must pass. <laughs> Sometimes all you need is a catchy little name. This is America. Right? Right. right. Just make money, that's all. Right. It's a game. You win if you got lots of money. Yeah. All right, so how about a sweetener? 
made from the pollen that bees get from marijuana flowers. Yeah. Ready for the name? Sweet and high. <laughs> you know that you watch these guys all the time, and that's basically the picture that you always see. I got little TV bodies that would complete... <laughs> this here. This is a good use of these old water bottles. When you're in a room with a smoker, you just stick this over his head. <laughs> and, uh, of course, you've all seen this before. This is just a little invention of mine, but I still think it's very good. <laughs> well, maybe we could take just a moment here to relax. Let me get my guitar, my old stool out here. Settle down and sing a song. All right. This is the spontaneous portion of the show. Would anyone like to just ask me a question, any kind of a question, I can handle it. Yes, sir, the Mexican over there. What? What happened to my other car? The one I used to drive? This is a new show. This is a new day. This is a new year. Welcome to today. I did, uh, I had a new uh, van door, because vans were in the 60s. Vans are cool. Vans are still neat. You pack up everything you need right in a van, and whenever you want it, just slam on the brakes, and it hits you in the back of the head. Thank you. Are there any more just spontaneous questions? You did not get any cookies tonight. Yes. Well, comedy is a surprise, you see. If I did exactly what you expected, then it wouldn't be damn funny! <laughs> Take, uh, let's take an opportunity to get on down here. Just relax and talk a little bit. Get kind of family. How many people came from a family? You came from a family. <laughs> well, and a few of you can, can kind of identify. I think the 60s kind of had of a family attitude to it. I hope that it carries on now. We were all involved in each other's lives, you know. You need to do that. Even if it's just a little thing. Like you see some guy walking along the street put his pants down to the crack of his ass, you know? <laughs> it looks bad for the whole town. <laughs> you know? Just come up and say, will you pull up your damn pants? Where's your mother? <laughs> Does your mom come over? My mom don't come over no more. <laughs> I don't know. I'm glad she don't. She'd always barge in the bathroom. Mothers think they can just barge in the bathroom. Sometimes I'm in there thinking about stuff. <laughs> one day I was in there, I was wondering where your lap goes when you stand up. And I go, now I don't have a lap. Mm, now I do have a lap. Mm, now I don't have a lap. Mm, now I do have a lap. No, that's backwards. <laughs> Then mom comes in. I said, I wonder where it goes. She says, it doesn't matter. Flush it. <laughs> mom was more realistic than, than dad. Dad tried to teach me. He wanted to teach me. Did your dad try and do that? I want to teach you, son. Go ahead. Ask me some questions. So I think, okay, boy. <laughs> Did Ray Charles ever hit his tooth on the mic? <laughs> Dad says, I don't know. I said, if Janet Guthrie wins the 500, will she have to kiss the pretty girl? I don't know. Do single people have dirty backs? I 
I don't know. If the flying saucers land and little green guys get out and they're in the nude, we won't know what not to look at. <laughs> Might be on top of their heads. <laughs> Might tip their hat and expose themselves. You know? <laughs> so I'd ask Dad these things. If M&Ms melt in your mouth but not in your hand, what do they do, say, under your arm? <laughs> Dad says, I don't know. I said, do you mind me asking you these questions? He says, no, how else are you gonna learn? <laughs> he said, I want to talk to you about sex anyway. I said, okay, what you wanna know? <laughs> Dad says, no, you can ask me anything. I think it's about time. I said, okay, why is there only eight and a half months between your anniversary and my birthday? <laughs> Yep. Dad said, we're going to have to have a man-to-man -man talk. I said, well, why does a man-to-man -man talk always take place between a man and a boy? Then Dad answered me with a question. He said, you want your face slapped? I said, no, but I could use my butt kicked. What do you say? That's why they call it rearing a child. Hey, sometimes words do mean what they say. Or they have extra meanings, and sometimes they have meanings they shouldn't have. Like I heard hung jury the other day. <laughs> and I say, what, all guys? <laughs> what did I hear the other day seem really fun? Urban gorillas. I see this gorilla out in the yard. <laughs> leaning on the fence, talking to the neighbors. Doesn't your mind fill with images as you hear these words? That's what the words are for. It's what language is all about. I see drive through hamburgers. <laughs> yeah. Bird's eye food is a real dumb. <laughs> you don't like get a pack of peas with bird's eyes on the outside. <laughs> yeah. I saw a can said Pepsi free, and I said, that means it don't have Pepsi in it. <laughs> That's a Coke. <laughs> Hog futures, I heard that. Hogs don't have no future. <laughs> Bacon is not a career. <laughs> what did I hear? The other day I heard solo synchronized swimming. What is that? <laughs> you know, if you're by yourself, what can you synchronize with? <laughs> Sounds dirty. <laughs> like breeding horses. That's, uh, you say, what do you do? We breed horses. Oh yeah, what, what's involved? You're like, Go on, get up there now. Go on, get up there. You'll like her. <laughs> She's big boned. She has a nice personality. <laughs> One day I hear, that, well, horse racing. Do you ever hear about that? That's, that seems strange to me. Horses don't want to race. It's them little some bitches on their back. <laughs> you put horses bare naked in the stalls, ring the bell, open the gate, they just go, dun, da, da, dun, da, da. eat some grass. Love your tail. <laughs> horse race is over too fast anyway. I was thinking the other day, it's about a minute and a half. That's too quick. Ought to have big people for jockeys. <laughs> Dick Wetkiss should have been a jockey. <laughs> Retired football players get jobs as a jockey, and then the horse's legs are buckling on the back stretch, <laughs> and he comes dragging them across the finish line. <laughs> Cut out that photo finish, bull. <laughs> Can you believe it? We're going to take a picture of the finish and tell you what it said. Not with my two dollars. <laughs> Topless female jockey. Now. Now I'll buy a photo finish. <laughs> One by a nose. No. Oh my God. <laughs> if she hadn't been excited, she'd have lost that damn right. I'm watching basketball. Boy, is it getting easy. The guys are getting taller. The basket ain't getting no higher. Is it? No, they're dunking it forward, dunking it backward, put your foot in your ear and dunk. <laughs> right? 
I ought to put the pole back under the basket. <laughs> so when you come in for a lap, you get laid up. <laughs> we need some more agony of defeat. <laughs> Am I right, gang? Yeah. You're involved in a relationship. How many people are married? Married people? Okay. All right, you're not involved in a relationship. <laughs> if you're involved in a relationship and you want to know who's in charge in your relationship, when you're laying in bed at night and you notice the light is still on, you get up to go turn it off, look back in bed, because that's who's in charge. <laughs> Let me see if you've seen this and you didn't think it was stupid. Dog food where the flavor matches the shape. <laughs> what? What dog eats them one at a time? The cheese chef one. Now, I'll taste that. <laughs> and now the chicken. Maybe that. Yeah. <laughs> the taste corresponds. A dog eats them all at once. He tastes a mush of all the flavors. <laughs> Say it's frivolous, superfluous products in America, like <coughs> scented toilet paper. <laughs> Who is that smell there to impress? <laughs> My thumb? <laughs> if you want to impress my thumb, make it thicker in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same thickness where it ain't supposed to rip as it is where it is supposed to rip. <laughs> is that dumb? Has anybody ever needed one of them little squares? <laughs> Two for a bugger, don't you? <laughs> I don't go digging with one ply. <laughs> what did I see the other day seems so dumb? This woman comes walking in the butcher shop carrying a plant. And the butcher says, your plant's dry. She says, so's your pork chop. <laughs> Any real man to say, what are you doing? Set me up, bitch? <laughs> you want to say something about my meat? You go ahead and say it. I don't have to carry a plant around. What if I said something about you? Your legs don't touch at the top. Ah! Uh... <laughs> really? They think we're just all foam heads. <coughs> beer, you know? Got to have a beer all the time. Beer, beer, beer. Yeah. Yeah. It ain't the only way to celebrate your accomplishments. I saw this, these three guys climb a mountain. Have you seen this commercial? They get up to the top and they say, boy, this ain't enough. We ought to have a beer. <laughs> 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 the one says, you got three in your backpack. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's real smart. Carried three clinking beers up the mountain. Didn't even know it. Now he's going to share them. If you carried three beers, wouldn't they be yours? <laughs> See, you've got to question this stuff. Just don't let it slide on by. These people are diabolical on TV. Have you ever seen, uh, have you watched a late movie? Have you, okay, one guy. <laughs> Who watched it with him? Somebody watched him. He didn't stay up by himself and watch the movie. Who watched the movie with him? Yeah. You did. What is your name, dude? I'm Rick. You're Ray? Rick. Rick. I'm Rick. <laughs> Like nobody else is rich. <laughs> Damn, I'm glad I finally run across him. <laughs> I have met so many imposters. <laughs> Damn, you're a big Rick, ain't you? Let me see just how tall you'd be if, if I was to come up again, yeah. <laughs> Well, I'd only come up again in one. <laughs> Rick, boy, I'm glad you must have a job, don't you? You got on your work clothes there. You come fresh from the job to the show, didn't you? The late show. The late show. <laughs> is, is Rick together with me on this? <laughs> Rick, when you was watching that late movie, did you ever see a lot of public service announcements? 
true. You did, didn't you? Sometimes you'd see the same one two and three times, didn't you, Rick? Right. Did you see any during the Super Bowl? No. <laughs> Wouldn't that have been a nice time to talk about child abuse? That's why I'm talking to you, Rick. <laughs> you got any children living? <laughs> what a thought. He doesn't kill them. But you see what they do? They pass a law in Washington. Them boys puff themselves up real big and pass a law that a certain percentage of the broadcast day must have public service announcements. And the network said, oh, yeah. But well, it meant the end. <laughs> right? That's our world. Hey, laid out right, ain't it? <laughs> Got to get your mind in the 60s and see that it don't make sense. Does it? Does it? No! Well, stick with me on this. Do so you think I'm the only one that don't like the phone company? No! Am I? No! tired of hearing them say, you could hold down the cost of your phone bill if you would look it up yourself in the book. <laughs> I know it. Do they have a book down there? No, they have a computer, don't they? Why? Because the book is dumb. <laughs> Whose idea was it anyway to give everybody in town a number? Why don't you just dial their name? <laughs> You might get a wrong number sometime, but it would be the right name. Yeah. Mary Smith would be there. <laughs> you, it'd be nicer than getting they, these nice things. Mary Smith, they go, Mary, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you'd be a little bit right. Plus, we could handle it, see? If they want to hand stuff out, give us computers. <laughs> right, the book is obviously a dumb idea If you want to cut down on the cost of the phone bill Quit printing the damn book Watch out, my Gentlemen, I did not come here tonight just to make you laugh I came here to sell you something <laughs> And I want you to pay particular attention Because in the modern kitchen there is a standard rule That for every kitchen task You must have the proper tool now you've got your corers, your borers, your graters, your shredders, your hashes, your mashes, your hammers and frammers, your mealers and peelers, corkscrewers and skewers, and knives, you wives and dishwashing daughters. We'll find in the depths of the dirty dishwater. But you want all that in your drawers? You want all that in your drawers? Master Tool Corporation, a subsidiary of Fly by Night Industries, has entrusted who? Me, to show you the handiest and the dandiest kitchen tool you've ever seen. And don't you want to know how it works? Yeah! Well, first, you get out an ordinary elbow. You place the ordinary elbow between the patented pants. Then what do you do, gang? You reach for the tool that is not a size. There is not a dice. There is not a chopper. And a hover, what in the hell could it possibly be? Hey! <laughs> show with a lot of stupidity. So instead, I would like to leave you with these words of wisdom. I want you to always remember, don't pick it up. Chances are when you need it again, it'll be right there where you left it. I want you to remember behind every successful man is an amazed mother-in-law.
don't, uh, don't think that just because I haven't paid <laughs> any attention to this little watermelon. <laughs> Is there anyone that particularly does not want me to smash this pig? <laughs> well, then let's go ahead and smash! <laughs> <laughs> Back on the rack is the mini skirt. Are you beginning to see what I mean? Check it out now. What in the past pieces?